Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And of course, as always, first I want to thank all the nice people on Steady or PayPal. Now we have reached part 39 in our series and today we will talk about derivatives of inverse functions and in particular about the derivative of the logarithm function. Therefore, please recall that we have defined the natural logarithm log as the inverse function of the exponential function. Also, we already know that the exponential function is differentiable everywhere. And this is what we simply call differentiable. Now, when we look at the coordinate system and at the two graphs of the functions, then we see that we get the logarithm when we reflect the exponential function. Also, we know differentiable means we have a slope here at each point. For example, we have a linearization here. However, when we reflect this linearization, we also get one for the logarithm which means that the property differentiability here is connected. Hence, the logarithm should also be differentiable. And moreover, we should be able to calculate the slope here when we know this one. Therefore, the question for today is, can we even do this in a general case where we just have an inverse function? In order to answer this, let's take two intervals i and j and a bijective function from i into j. Now, by the definition of bijectivity, we know there is a well-defined inverse function. And this f inverse goes from j into i. Now, of course, what we have to put in here is the differentiability of the function f at one given point. And as often, we call this point x0. However, now I also want to put in that the slope at this point is not 0. Now, this makes sense when you think of the graphs again because a function with slope 0 could look like this. Then at this point here, the slope is exactly 0. Hence, we have this constant function as the linearization. Then in the next step, let's reflect the graph to get the inverse function. However, now we would have the strange thing that the linearization at the given point is not a function anymore. We would simply have an infinite slope at this point. Hence, for the inverse function, we can't have differentiability here. For this reason, we have to exclude such points in the assumption. Okay, now when we fix such a point x0, we can map it to j and then look at the inverse function at this point. Hence, let's simply call this point y0. Now we are interested in the differential quotient for the inverse function, which is given by a limit, which can be calculated with sequences. So we take a sequence yn in j, where we exclude y0. However, as always, it should be convergent to this point. Okay, and for the sequence, we look at the difference quotient. So we have f inverse of yn minus f inverse of y0 divided by yn minus y0. Then when we send n to infinity, we get the derivative of f inverse at the point y0. However, before we do that, we first want to work with this expression here because we want to translate this back to the original function f. And we already know this works for y0 because this is simply f of x0. And of course, it's no problem at all, we can also do this for yn. Since by the definition of the inverse function, we know there is exactly one point we can call xn that fulfills that f of xn is yn. Of course, this is simply the bijectivity. Okay, then let's put everything in and then we get the following. So as you can see, in the denominator we have f of xn minus f of x0 and in the numerator we have this composition. However, of course, this is simply xn minus x0. Hence, now we recognize this is exactly the reciprocal of the normal difference quotient. And in fact, this is the translation to the function f we wanted. Because now we can simply perform the limit on the left hand side and the right hand side here. And then we get an equality that connects both derivatives. So let's write this down in the next line. So here we see the left hand side is the derivative of the inverse function at the point y0 if it exists. Of course we hope that we can show the existence with the right hand side. Now the first thing we can do here is to push the limit inside the parentheses by the limit theorems for sequences. However, please note this also only works if this limit exists. And indeed, this is not clear at all. Now the whole limit would be the derivative of f at the point x0 if this sequence goes to x0. 
Hence, this is what we really need, otherwise the whole calculation wouldn't work. The problem here is we don't know what the limit of xn is, because we only know that the limit of yn is y0. Which of course we could use here when we apply the inverse function. Because f inverse yn is simply xn. Ok, I think at this point you are very well trained at real analysis and to recognize this property. Namely, it's by definition the continuity of f inverse at the point y0. Hence, this is a thing we have to assume at the beginning such that this calculation works. But in the case we have it, this is indeed the derivative of f at the point x0. So in short, f prime x0. And there we have it, this is the connection between the derivative of f and the derivative of the inverse function of f. Now an important thing to note here is that on the left hand side this minus 1 denotes the inverse function and on the right hand side this minus 1 denotes just the reciprocal of this number. Ok, then I would say let's put everything we know now into a nice theorem. So now we know all the assumptions we need and also the outcome. Therefore let's take intervals again and also a bijective function f. Now in the case that this function is differentiable at a point x0 with non-vanishing slope and that the inverse function of f is continuous at the point f of x0 we call y0, then the inverse function is differentiable at this point y0. And in addition we also know how to calculate this derivative. Namely it's given by 1 over the derivative of f at x0 where instead of x0 we should write f inverse of y0. Because then we have the same variable on the left hand side and the right hand side. Which is much better for explicit calculations. Ok, then I would say let's immediately apply this nice formula for the logarithm. In fact this will be an example we can easily calculate. So we take log and we want to get the derivative. Here of course the name of the variable we want to put in does not matter at all, we can choose any name. Maybe for the sake of consistency let's take y. Then we can just use our formula here where f is just the exponential function and f inverse the logarithm. There you see we have the derivative of the exponential function which is as you know the same function again. So what we have is the function and its inverse together which just cancel out. So what remains is just 1 over y. And there we have it, this is the derivative of the logarithm function. It's a relation you really should remember because later we will use it a lot. Especially when we do integration. However, first in the next videos we will continue with derivatives. Therefore I hope I see you in the next video and have a nice day. Bye.